Okay, this is the third video for uh, putting fractions in order from least to greatest. And we've got three fractions here. We've got to figure out which one is the least, which one is the greatest, and which one goes in the middle. Uh, the first step, you remember, always try and estimate. Find out which ones are greater than half or less than half. And maybe even one will be greater than one whole. But let's find out. Um, let's see, two-thirds, two out of three, that's more than half. I'm going to write a little M right there. And four-fifths, that's obviously more than half. And two out of eight, well, half of eight is four. Two is a lot less than that. So what we can say is that just by looking at these, we know that two-eighths is going to be the least. Okay, so there's the least. And I'm going to cross this out. We don't need that anymore. Boom. Boom. I'm left with two-fourths and four-fifths, and I could try and find a common denominator, but we're going to look at a new trick today called cross-multiplying. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, write two-thirds and four-fifths, and by cross-multiplying, what I mean is I'm going to take this denominator, the three, and cross-multiply. We'll make a little uh, up and diagonal motion. Three times four... I'm going to write this 4 times 3, is 12. And now I'm going to take the 5, and I'm going to multiply the 5 times the 2. 2 times 5, and that turns out to be 10. Okay? Now, you may have seen this before, and you, thought, you were taught to think of this and this, and see which one of those is the greater number, right? but I want to show you why that works. Really what you're doing, if you multiply this top number by 3, secretly you're also multiplying the bottom number by 3, and we're going to get 15. And over here, if you multiply the top number by 5, you're actually going to be multiplying secretly the bottom number by 5, and we're getting 15. And voila, you have found a common denominator. Right? So we can think of 2 thirds. We have made an equivalent fraction called 10 fifteenths, right? We multiply the top and the bottom by 5. And if we look at 4 fifths, we've made an equivalent fraction called 12 fifteenths. And we have secretly figured out a common denominator, or in a sneaky way, right? Now, so we know that since the denominator is the same, we can just look at the numerator. So which one of these is the smallest? It turns out that 10 fifteenths, I should change the color here, 10 fifteenths is less than twelve fifteenths. So ten fifteenths is in the middle, and our largest fraction is going to be twelve fifteenths. Okay? And that is the greatest. Okay? Twelve fifteenths is the greatest. So this cross-multiplying trick finds a common denominator. I I'm just going to show you that often we don't really bother figuring out the bottom part. Right? Because this trick shows us, and I call it a trick because you're kind of cheating a little bit. You're, you're finding the answer without finding a common denominator. Um, so this trick shows us the, the, the numerators. Right, That one was 12 and that one was 10. So you look at the greatest numerator and that is the greater fraction. Okay, let's try one more. Boom. Now, uh, first of all, of course, your first step, always estimate. Um, 6 out of 8, more than half. 4 out of 12, less than half, so let's write a little L up here. More. 7 out of 9, definitely more than half. Okay, so 4 twelfths is the least. And I'm left with uh, 6 eighths and 7 ninths. 6 eighths and 7 ninths. So let's write these down. I've got 6 eighths and I've got 7 ninths. And I'm going to use this cross multiplication trick, right? So here we go. 7 times 8 is 56. And 9 times 6 is 54. So we can see, if these are the numerators, this is the bigger fraction. 7 ninths is going to be the bigger fraction. All right, and so if that's the greatest one, then obviously 6 eighths is the one that's going to be in the middle. 6 eighths. And there it is. Now, I, I want to say one other thing. Uh, a lot of people are going to insist that they can just tell which fraction is the biggest. Say, oh, I knew 7 ninths was the biggest. And that's a terrible mistake, because let's check this out. 
Um, if I multiply this top number by 8, and I multiply the bottom number by 8, we get a denominator of 72. And if I multiply this top number by 9 to get 54, I multiply the bottom, the denominator, by 9, and we get 72. Let's look at these two fractions, 54 out of 72 versus 56 out of 72. 70 seconds, right? If something is cut into 72 pieces, those pieces are really small, right? Really small pieces. And this one only has two more of those tiny pieces, right? So if you think you can just look at 6 eighths and 7 ninths and see a difference, just mentally estimate a difference of two 70 seconds, you're, you're fooling yourself, right? So I don't want you to do that, right? Being honest and owning what you know and what you don't know is going to help you be more successful, right? You don't want to guess and try and trick yourself into thinking that you really know what you're doing. When fractions are this close, you have to use math to check. All right, good luck.